What's going on guys? So today I'm going to do a little bit of a fun little video for you guys. We are going to be comparing two Mac Pros that are pretty much exactly a decade apart. We have the Mac Pro 4,1 which is an early 2009 on the left and of course we have the late 2019 Mac Pro 7,1 which is the newest model. And I figured it would be cool since I have both of these just to do a little bit of a comparison video to see how far these Mac Pros have come in about a decade. The first thing I want to start off with is the design. They're both very similar and also very different. The 4,1 Mac Pro over here uses the quote-unquote cheese grater design and this actual case came out with the PowerMag G5 in I believe 2003 and it received a lot of internal changes but externally they look very very similar. So this was obviously a huge step up from the plastic based G4s of the time and of course they decided to not make much modifications to the case for the Mac Pro and as such the entire thing is constructed of aluminum. The entire front is pretty much ventilation pretty nice there. Moving on to the 2019 Mac Pro very similar it is still constructed of aluminum however the front holes have been enlarged quite a bit we have this nice Apple calls it a lattice pattern on the front which I am a big fan of to be honest. The cooling system on the 2019 Mac Pro should be quite a bit better in terms of maximum thermal limitations. These older ones like to run a little bit hot. Let's talk a little bit about the front end of these devices. Now as you may be able to tell we have some ports on the front of the 4,1. We have our power button, a headphone jack, two USB 2.0 ports, and two FireWire 800 ports. We also have two optical bay drives at the top. The top one obviously is loaded with a super drive and that is about it for the front. You may be able to see the fans inside the vents there, but anyhow, that is our front IO on the older Mac Pro. The new one does not have anything. It's just all completely this lattice-based ventilation, which I think is really nice. The cooling system is quite a bit better on this model. You may be asking, where is the power button? It's actually on the top. The power button is now on top here in the center. We have our power LED here, and then we have two Thunderbolt 3 ports. You may also be able to tell that the handles on the older one are part of the case, whereas you might notice on the new one here that the handles are actually part of the space frame, which is what Apple calls it. But it's basically one complete frame that goes from the feet through the top and down to the other foot again. It's all one piece, so we'll show you that here in a second. Going around back, you may notice some differences. As you can see on the 4,1 Mac Pro, the power supply is mounted towards the top, whereas on the newer one, it is down at the bottom because the power supply in that one is, of course, modular. As you can see over here, we have five PCI slots, whereas on the other one, I believe, if you don't count that Apple I.O. card, you get seven or eight, so that's quite a bit more PCI expansion on the newer Mac Pro. At the top here, again, more ventilation, whereas there's actually a rear-mounted fan on the 4,1. There is technically on the new one too, but it's technically on the side uh, towards the bottom there. So with that said, we have a little bit more legacy I.O. than the newer Mac Pro by default. We get three USB 2.0 ports, two more FireWire 800s, optical audio in and out. We have line in, a headphone jack, and dual gigabit ethernet, whereas on the newer Mac Pro, Apple just gives you an I.O. card, which only has two USB-A's, two Thunderbolt 3's, which are connected to the graphics card, I believe, if you want to use those as display outputs, and a headphone jack. With the newer Mac Pro, like I said, you have a lot more PCI cards, and so, or PCI slots, rather, so you could easily add even more ports than this Mac Pro has uh, to this one. At the bottom on our graphics card, we have two HDMI ports on my model and two gigabit Ethernet ports, and of course the power supply. So, with that said, there is more room for expansion on the newer one, but there is more standard I.O. on the older one. Next, I want to take a rundown into a little bit more of architectural and general hardware differences. Being 10 years apart, there are many. On the 4,1 here, you can see that the side panel comes off very similar to a regular old desktop PC, and that's pretty much the only access you get inside the machine is from this side. Whereas on the new Mac Pro, you might be able to tell that the entire casing comes off and you can have 360 degree access to every component in this computer. And it's actually very, very simple to service and work on, which, I mean, this one technically is too because the CPU and RAM is on a separate daughter card, but I would say the newer Mac Pro has a lot more 
room and ease of repairability and expandability. As far as architectural differences, the 2009 launched with Nehalem based Intel Xeons, like first gen i series stuff, and the newer Mac Pro has the Cascade Lake based Xeons, which are the newest ones available as of recording this. You could get dual CPUs in the 2009 all the way up to 12 cores, that would be two six core processors, versus the newer Mac Pro, which is entirely a single CPU computer, but you can get up to a 28 core Xeon, which is quite a bit more power than obviously the 2009 would be able to handle. Now on this one, this is a single CPU model, but we have four RAM slots and those are 1066 megahertz. That is DDR3 ECC. If you had the dual CPU model, you'd get a maximum of eight RAM slots. Whereas on the newer one around back there, every model no matter which configuration you choose, has 12 total RAM slots. And the 8-core Xeon, which is the one that I have here, supports a maximum of one terabyte of RAM unofficially, and the Mac Pro over here would be able to support 48 gigabytes. If it was a dual socket model, then it would be able to support a maximum of 128 gigabytes of RAM. So that's pretty nice. You have a lot more performance ceiling or RAM ceiling with the newer model. On the left here, you may be able to notice that we have four SATA drive bays. These are all 3.5 inch and they're running at the SATA 2 link speed. Whereas over here on the newer Mac Pro, you don't have any uh, standard SATA drives, but you do have a whack ton of PCI slots. So you could easily pick up a cheap PCI to NVMe SSD card or a couple even, and you could load this thing up with a lot of storage. You may be able to notice the empty space next to the processor up there. That is where you could be able to put a SATA drive cage that Apple actually sells in their store for the Mac Pro. It is $400, but it does allow you to mount SATA desktop drives in this Mac Pro. The Mac Pro on the left has a 120 gigabyte uh, SATA 2 SSD that I put in there. And this one over here has two SSD slots. And the one that I chose here is a one terabyte model. And so that means that there are two 512 gig SSDs in RAID. So that's pretty dope. They're not user upgradable because they're tied to the T2 chip, but we do get much faster and of more storage standard on this model. So if you loaded all these up, you could get a lot of storage. However, like I said, it is limited to that SATA 2 link speed. Now you could get around this with, again, a PCI Express 2 a SATA card and you would be able to bypass that limitation. Like I said, with the newer Mac Pro, we do have quite a bit more PCI slots than this one. This Mac Pro over here is kind of hard to run dual GPUs in, both because there's not a ton of power headers and just because there's not a ton of room in there. This machine does support off-the-shelf PCI graphics cards, just like the 4 comma one over here. But I would say that in general, for expandability and performance, ceiling, the newer Mac Pro is on another level, even compared to, let's say, even a 2012 cheese grater, you're getting a lot more options and, and things you can do with the newer Mac Pro. And then, of course, you have all the other benefits of having, you know, a modern computer. We have Bluetooth 5.0 instead of Bluetooth 2.1 on the, the 4 comma one. We have N-based Wi-Fi versus AC-based Wi-Fi on the newer one. This one has a 980 watt power supply, the 4 comma one does, and the 7 comma one has a massive 1400 watt power supply. So again, more expandability, more room for large components and stuff. So that's about it for the hardware overview. But I just want to say that inside out, the newer Mac Pro is built to a much higher caliber in that the tolerances in the build and everything are a lot tighter. Everything feels way on another level in terms of quality. Not to say that the 4.1 feels bad quality. It's well built also, but this one on the right is on another level in that regard. All right, so even though it's not scientific at all, I think it'd be fun to see a boot race between these two computers. Now, I will post the specs in the description, the full specs of each, in case you're curious, but uh, let's go ahead and do this. I'm thinking I can press the power button on these at the same time. Now, this one has an aftermarket graphics card, so it won't have a boot screen. Okay, the 2019 Mac Pro is up and going. And there's the 2009. And the 2019 is up. Oh, and we have the 4,1 right behind it. 
So that actually was much closer than I anticipated it being. Yeah, this is why we do this. Next, I think it'd be cool to have a little comparison of the fan noise from these machines. And the really only reason I'm doing this is to show you how darn quiet this 2019 Mac Pro is. So first up, before we get to that, I will start with the 4,1. I will run it at idle and then I will blast the fans and we'll compare between the two and see which one is quieter. That's going to be about it guys. I thought it would just be kind of fun to look at the major differences between the original Cheese Grater and the new Cheese Grater Mac Pros. So if you enjoyed this video, thank you and I will see you in the next one.